All right, we have a pretty lengthy problem, so we're just going to dive on in. The statement reads, the preceding problem was an artificial model for the, char for the charging capacitor designed to avoid complications associated with the current spreading out over the surface of the plates. For a more realistic model, imagine thin wires that connect to the centers of plates shown in figure A. Again, the current I is constant, the radius of the capacitor is A, and the separation of the plates is W much, much less than A. Assume that the current flows out over the plates in such a way that the surface charge is uniform at any given time and that at T and zero at T equals zero. All right, so A, we want to find the electric field between the plates as a function of time. B, find the displacement current through a circle of radius S in the plane midway between the plates. Using the circle as your Ampérian loop, uh, and the flat surface that spans it, find the magnetic field at a distance s from the axis. C, repeat part D, but this time use a cylindrical surface shown in figure B, which is opened at the right end and extends to the left through the plate and terminates outside the capacitor. Notice that the displacement current through the surface is zero and that there are two contributions to I enclosed. All right, so a lot to talk about these diagrams. Let's go check it out. So for diagram A, we just have I passing through it, the wire to the center of the plate, and we have a parallel plate capacitor of two circles. And then you see here our surface therefore is a cylinder, and we're looking for what it is what it is at a distance S up from the central axis. Open on the right end and terminates outside the parallel outside the capacitor plate. Alright, let's go ahead and dive in. Um, the work here isn't too long, but we still have to know the same thing. The displacement current density and the electric field for parallel plate capacitor. So the first two go by pretty quick. The reasoning for part C is gonna take a little more time, but we can at least streamline A and B real quick. So the electric field is, as a function of time, is equal to E of T, which is equal to sigma T over epsilon naught. Again, sigma is the charge. Um, of course, therefore, we know that that's Q of T over uh, epsilon naught A if we divide um, Q of T by A, that's the surface charge, nothing new. But we know that the charge of the total or cumulative charge is just the integral of the current, dt, since the relationship is differential, and the area here is pi A squared. So if I is considered constant, then the integral just goes I, d, uh, I integral dt, which just gives us t, because it's zero at t equals zero. So we get t minus zero, which just leaves us with t. Pretty straightforward, I'd say. Easy, easy enough. Now for part B, the displacement current, well, we have to find the integral of the displacement current density, which we know is the time derivative of the electric field times epsilon naught. So we plug away at that. We see that epsilon naughts cancel again. We see that I pi over A squared is constant. So the um, partial derivative of T just goes to one. Our DA clearly is in the Z hat direction. So we go to S bar DS D phi. And again, over a circle, and uh, we just integrate through. We see we get a lot of two, the two pi canceling from the phi integral with the two and the pi uh, that was given. And then we see we just get a ratio of current from S squared over A squared, which we've seen this before, that ratio of the surface being inside to outside. It makes sense. And then at the surface, we see that uh, we get uh, S equal A squared, so it simplifies down to um, I Again, physically, it all makes sense. It all checks out. The magnetic field is then uh, the line integral is equal to mu naught ID enclosed. Again, we've seen this last time. And you see here that with the line integral being a circular loop, you get 2 pi S. And we see that on the right-hand side, we plug in ID enclosed. And you see that we get a factor of S that cancels. Lo and behold, we get B equal mu naught IS over 2 pi A squared in the fiat direction. Same as our last, same as the last question when we dealt with the wire that was cut. Now, C, we got to do a little more work. Um, we see that a, a surface current flows radially outward over the left plate. So we'll go ahead and let I of S be the total current crossing a circle of radius S. Okay. The charge density at time T is, well, if we look at the charge, the Q of T is equal to Q over A, which we already saw Q is the integral of I dt. A is just uh, pi S squared. But we see here that um, 
I is not exactly constant. What we have is that for the charge on the plate, whatever we have is the total uh, current minus a charge on the cylinder um, of reference. So that we're looking at what's outside of the cylinder. Okay, so that's why we have I minus IS. Um, and that's the only reason why that's there like that. It took me a little while to maneuver it in my head, but nonetheless, it's pretty straightforward there. But what this is saying is that since we're told that this is independent of S, it must be that this uh, difference, I minus IS, is equal to some factor of uh, times S squared for the area's sake. Um, and so if we, for some constant beta, and so if we plug in the fact that at T equals zero, or at the at the line A, at radius A, current is zero since it's uniformly distributed, and we only have current through that uh, gout or the uh, cylinder, we have zero at the actual boundary of current. So with that, if we plug in A, we see that I is equal to beta, or excuse me, I minus A, I minus I at A, which goes to zero, is equal to beta times A squared, which we clearly see that after the cancellation, we just get I, the current is equal to uh, beta A squared, so beta is equal to uh, I over A squared. And if we plug that into the difference of the currents, what we see is I minus IS is equal to I times S squared over A squared, which we've seen this set up before. So if we want to set up this using Ampere's law and find a magnetic field, what we see is that we have uh, the line integral of B is equal to mu naught I enclosed, which again, a loop, so 2 pi S <coughs> is equal to mu naught, the difference of the currents which we just saw was equal to I S squared over A squared, and we get the same thing as we did in part B. Pretty consistent, pretty nice. Again, I'll have a little more explanation for you in the description because there's a reason why this was set up this way.